Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I'll be going over my keybinds, control settings, and ability tray order. As always, chapters to everything are listed below. And before I get started, please beam up to a space map if you're not already there. In order to change your space keybinds, you must be in a space map. Now, starting with the space controls, quite a bit here is personal preference, such as your camera type and shaking. I personally prefer the free camera so that you're able to have full control over where you're looking. And for the camera shaking, I like to have that off as that can be a distraction. Now shifting down to AOE targeting assist, I have that set to off. That is just going to allow the camera to point at your target's feet when using AOE powers in shooter mode. So that's just not relevant at all. Reset inactive tab target. If enabled, if you go a certain number of seconds between tab targeting, your tab target will reset to your auto target the next time you try to tab. I have that set to off. Then for click on selects target, if enabled, clicking anywhere in the main window that is not on the target will cancel your currently selected target. I have that on. That's nice if you need to quickly deselect a target like the Borg Queen who just had a feedback pulse pop up. And the next two are very important for the Vovin keybind. So only attack if target selected. That needs to be off and select auto target on attack. Also leave that to off. That makes it so when you use the, the Vovin keybind that I'll show you later, you can use that console without actually teleporting. Now for the next four, these are on assist target on attack, never auto target objects and pets, and then target threatening enemies first. I just have all those on. Now for select attacker if attacked, I find this one is good to have off as well. That prevents you from accidentally targeting something right as your Vovin keybind is about to go off. Then for tab select off screen targets, I also have that set to off. Keep moving during contact dialogues, definitely keep that on. Tap movement direction twice to roll, that's relevant for pilot ships and personally, I prefer to just have that off. And for the auto attack, I like to leave that on maintain auto attack nowadays. I have keybind set up to enable and disable my auto fire, so I find just leaving it on the maintain auto attack is just the best option for me. And heading over to my keybinds, I originally set them up in the Federation Emergency Services Keybinds app, which I have covered in prior videos. But there is now a web-based tool for keybind creation that is a bit more feature-packed, and you'll likely want to use that instead. The STO Tools Keybind Manager has some newer keybinds, such as the Visual Effects Removal, and it does have support for aliases, which can allow you to really dive in and make binds that are more efficient and catered to your use case. And as you can see, it does have a dark mode. In addition, if you still have your keybinds text file in your STO folder or save somewhere, you can take that and import it right into this tool, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to import the bind file that was exported by the old Federation Emergency Services tool. I'm going to hit space here. And you can see it's loaded all my keybinds right up. Now, this is a really nice tool, and I do plan to cover it more in a future video, but for today, I'm just going to be looking at my keybinds in this tool to show you guys what they do. Now, for the keybind itself, I do want to be clear here that this is not perfect. It is designed around how I'm playing the game, and there's likely some little tweaks here and there that I could do to improve its efficiency. You should not be copying it one for one, rather take away some of the ideas and concepts to improve your own keybinds. Now, starting with the F key, this is going to activate trays 10 and 1. This serves as my primary spam bar. So it starts with tray 10 and then goes left to right, and then it moves down to tray 1, left to right. And as you can see, spacebar does double up for tray 1, which is where I currently have my unconventional systems procs. This gives me some extra control in case I need to bypass tray 10 for whatever reason, and frequently I just use it to make sure I'm hitting the unconventional systems procs as soon as they come off cooldown. Now for the G key, I use this for tray nine, and this is where I put my big damage buffs. You see a lot of people going in and they'll burn their alpha, go down fighting, they're their big damage buffs like early on in a prep phase or something. By having them on a separate key, it, it's just giving you some extra control and making sure you're using them where you need to use them in the run. So I prefer to separate those out and it works pretty well for me. Now, for keys C and V, they are the exact same thing. They're set up to target the gateway, and then they'll activate tray 8. Now, what tray 8 is doing is it's activating my control abilities and some of my really big damage dealing clickies. So I've got QSM on there, followed immediately by Gravewell, Timeline Claps, then Agony. You know, it's, it's going to target the gateway and dump a bunch of stuff on it that's going to bring all the spheres to it and then do a bunch of damage. Now, if you're not in Infected, you know, this is set up for my solo ISC runs, 
if you're taking that keybind into other content where there's not a gateway, it'll just ignore the target gateway part and activate tray 8 against your target. And I really like how this tool is going in and warning me that there's an issue with this specific uh, keybind here. So basically the way that the Federation Emergency Services tool set it up is it goes left to right and then back right to left. So that's something I could improve, not that it really matters too much with this keybind. And next up is the T key, which I have set up to target the cube in Infected and then execute tray 6, slots 5 and 6, which is currently Fire and Remark and the Odd Thought Shield Console. So this is something I found was helping me out for the solo ISCs. This is a keybind you probably don't need. But for the solo runs, I often am trying to position in a way that I'm able to hit the gateway and the cube at the same time. And by having this keybind, it made it very easy for me to target the cube and then the gateway as needed. And left control here is set up to fire mines and then activate tray 4 slots 7 through 0. This is just a relic from the tort builds I used to do, so you probably don't need that, but that was a nice keybind to have if you have any abilities you want to put there. Uh, you could, for instance, put like evasive there if you wanted to have, you know, a quick way to hit evasive. Now, for my tab key, tab is set to... Uh, default auto attack one, so that's turning my auto attack on with the maintain auto attack setting I showed. Basically, when I hit tab, my weapons are able to immediately fire as soon as there's an enemy in range. And then I also have select the next target on that key. And then for shift and tab, that is for if the queen does like a feedback pulse in hive, if I hit those together, that's going to clear my target and it's going to turn auto fire off so my weapons will not fire upon the next weapon cycle. Now hopping back in game here, I do want to clarify that with the auto fire uh, stuff that I have with tab and the maintain auto attack, you need to actually have auto fire turned on on your weapons and hangar bays for, for that to work. So if I hit tab, you can see my weapons are flashing and my pets just launched out because they're ready to, to go. Now if I hit shift tab, you can see that my weapons are no longer flashing, so they wouldn't fire if there was a target in front of me, and my pets are not going to launch when the timer hits 5 because of that command, as you just saw there. And the final two keybinds are on my mouse, so I'm using the two buttons I have on the side of the mouse. So up front is mouse button 5, and that is my Voving keybind that clears the target and then activates tray 7 slot 1 where the Voving console is. And then mouse button 4 is the back one here, and for me that activates tray 7 slots 2 through 4, so that's my Fleet Power Network Array keybind. It activates the battery and then overrides subsystem safeties first to make sure I'm getting as much of a boosted Fleet Power as I possibly can. Now I want to demonstrate the Voving Keybind in action, so I'm going to head back in-game here. And with the Voving console, the way it would typically work if you don't have your settings set up the way that I showed before, is when you use the console, it's going to put you two kilometers in front of the, the thing you're targeting. But when I use this Keybind here, you can see I just used it without teleporting. So. That is really, really important if you're looking to use the Voving console without teleporting. You can set that up for whatever key you want. That is just the one that I've personally used. I just have found it works very easy for me, along with the Fleet Power keybind I have on the key right next to it. Now, you've probably noticed that aside from the Mines key, the rest of the keybinds do not feature fire weapons or redistribute shield commands. Both will cause disruptions in ability and weapon activations, lowering your performance potential, and therefore your DPS. For redistribute shields, there's also the abilities that like to randomly appear on your tray. Just find a nice corner to put them in, and leave them alone. Now, for firing weapons, I know it sounds crazy, but if you spam that fire weapons command, you can make your weapons fire less. The auto fire settings I showed before, along with the auto fire on and off commands, is much better. You still don't want to spam bar that, but I just turn the weapons on at the start of the run in the prep phase, and they're on until either the run is over or until I hit the keybind to turn off auto fire. And shifting over to my tray and ability activation order, I'm a big fan of maxing out the tray to 10 slots. It gives me room to space things out and have different parts of the tray for me to focus on at different points in a run. 
But even with all of these keybinds, I still have a lot of things that I manually hit during a run. There's just some stuff that you need to have manual control over. For instance, the Credence to Lithium console. The two second activation time on that really needs you to be manually timing that so you don't screw yourself over. And you've likely noticed that there are some duplicated abilities on the tray. So I have a startup sequence that I do during the prep phase on most runs. At 20 seconds, I will manually hit the battery here for fleet power. Then I'll go and hit my three Elios toggles to turn those on for the run. That's also three universal design stacks that I then have right off the bat. At 15 seconds, I then hit merge powered engines. And at around 10 to 11 seconds, I'll start to hit this group of abilities here. So I'll start with like TAC initiative, then I'll do my TAC and Intel fleet, then the Credence console, uh, beam overload, then adaptive, the DPRM, and the, uh, the Guardian console. Then after that, I'll hit vulnerability assessment, OSS, fleet power, then I'll hit G to hit the damage buffs there. And then I'll go through on my F key to start getting my CSV, beta, and the other firing modes up. For the primary spam bar, I like to have my main firing mode up front, which in this example for me is Cannon Scatter Volley. It's very important that you don't have another firing mode or ability with a long activation time immediately before or after your primary firing mode. Doing so can result in more misfires. So in this case, I have a beta and console separating it before the next firing mode. After that is the rest of my attack abilities and consoles that I want up as much as possible, followed by emergency powered engines. And then on tray 1, after all of tray 10, it goes through and starts to hit my unconventional system's triggers. I want those to go off after my consoles have been used, so that I'm getting the cooldown reduction applied. And for the G key, again that is tray 9, that is just my big damage buffs, so alpha, go down fighting, and then the advanced energy amplifier batteries. I used to have the DPRM on there as well, but I took that off and just manually hit that so that I'm getting that when I need the big survivability boost it provides. Now for the C and V keys, which is my target gateway and then tray 8, starting at the left, that is QSM, which is buffing up my grav well, and then of course is the grav well immediately following. Then timeline collapse, agony redistributor, then I have the Achilles console on, the sequential warhead loader off of the Shangri Law, Kratom Chronophage, and then I have Focus Frenzy, and then some of the rep click keys that do damage. Basically, the point of this key is that I'm grouping everything up and just dealing a ton of damage to them. And aside from the other keybinds I already discussed, everything else is manually activated because I need them timed for specific points in a run. Now, like I said before, this is a setup that I'm used to, and it's not something that you should directly copy one for one. The takeaway here is with tray order and keybinds, with how many clickies and abilities we have to activate nowadays, you really do want to have some sort of separation. You don't want to have everything on one spam bar. I've seen people do it, and that results in an enormous loss in performance potential. So whatever your build is, if you have the bandwidth to handle multiple keybinds, take some time and figure out what makes sense to split off to separate keys. The situation is and to close things out, here is a live demonstration of this all in action where you can see my hands as I go through and uh, spam all the, the buttons. So at the start here, I didn't hit tab. Instead, I just launched the uh, the pets. The reason for that is if I use my tab here and I target the cube, the pets, the, the type sevens will burn their beta right off the bat. So I'm just going to go through and start my pre-buff sequence here.
The guy left a mess on the side. Oh, the sphere died. Okay, it's not a perfect run. There's a few parts where I messed up, but there you got to, to see the keyboard in action, like my actual hands spamming the spam bars there, uh, and you got the on-screen keyboard, so you know, hopefully everything I've got in this video helps a few That's folks out. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below. And as always, thank you to all channel members and viewers for their continued support. See you guys around.